Thank you so much, Sir Juan Carlos Echeverria, the Minister of Finanzas de, de Colombia, um, for being with Bloomberg Television. Thank you so much. Um, first of all, uh, we have tomorrow a central bank meeting. Um, President Santos said that mentioned that the central bank, uh, there's no need for raise interest rates um, after the inflation is low in, in July. Um, but still, the, the markets, they are betting that there will be further raising rates. Um, does they make for Colombia to be the only major central bank, oh, the only major economy, Latin America economy, uh, to likely raise rates uh, further this year, given the fears of a recession, economic recession? We have paused uh, last month. We were increasing interest rates from 3% to 4.5% since February and June, July. And uh, last month we paused because there was, a, well, this new information regarding the, the world economy, Greece and, and uh, Southern Europe, etc. And then the central bank considered first that the interest rate has been increasing towards a near to the neutral level. And second, that we should wait for more information from abroad and from within. So I cannot be explicit about this because I'm part of the board. So, uh, but uh, I think that we will consider very seriously what the information is right now about about the, the state of uh, of affairs in 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 Greece, in debt, in the markets, etc. So uh, it's difficult to say, but uh, I think this is a signal in whatever has happened everywhere. What I've said is that the president of Colombia has more room of, uh, of uh, maneuver than I do because I cannot. I am part of the board. I vote. I'm one of the seven votes in the central bank. So I have to keep my, my peace in this. But uh, we will have a sensible policy. We, we have had a very conservative approach. Uh, is the first thing is inflation is under check. It's in 3.2%. The target is 3. The range is 2 to 4. So inflation rate is behaving properly. We don't have shocks of relative prices. Let's say the price of gasoline or the price of food is OK. It's behaving. We don't expect shocks in, in these prices if something, the price of uh, gasoline has come, back, come down. So in principle, there, is no, there are no supply uh, uh, side uh, the shocks in, in inflation. Demand is behaving properly. So uh, what we're heading towards is, is a, an interest rate that uh, that is kind of neutral, so right? It's likely that it's going to be stable. Probably. I cannot say that, but... <laughs> and um, you're assessing in other countries, other Latin American countries, for example, Brazil, Israel, has done... No, Israel is not a Latin American country, but other, other countries. Brazil and Israel has recently um, inter cut interest rates. Uh, what did you reckon, what, what is your assessment, that um, what will do this preemptive great cuts given the expected global recession is is different from colombia because in the case of brazil they were having as they said a, an overheating economy we we didn't we our output gap were clo was closing their output gap was was widening so they have they they, they can't change the stance in monetary policy and probably a uh, watching was coming from abroad, they were having a decline in, a substantial decline in growth. In the case of Colombia, we, I expect that we finish the year between 5 and 6 percent of growth rate. Uh, I think that the third quarter was very good. So we're not uh, in, the, in the same phase for, for GDP dynamics. However, of course, uh, the, the, uncertain, the uncertainty regarding news from, from the international economy especially from Europe, is so big that we have to keep an open mind towards uh, monetary policy and to fiscal policy. If necessary, what we have said and the President has said, if necessary we should, uh, we should be able to and, and, and ready to change the stance. But it's not the timing right now. Mm -hmm. and, and you mentioned that the three quarter was very good of GDP. Um, what is your forecast for the rest of the four quarter and 2012? The growth of the first half of this year was 5%. Uh, so the second half, I expect growth to take us close to 5.5. So for next year, we have an official forecast of 4.5. Actually, the uh, IMF has also just forecasted for 4.5. 
and we want to keep the 5% uh, growth rate. Of course, if worse if war comes to worse in, in the world economy, we, we should have uh, some impact, but we will try to rely on domestic demand, on domestic consumption, domestic investment, so as to stabilize growth, especially employment. Our first goal is to maintain employment so that employment, the number of jobs, uh, don't suffer any shock, and also try to dampen the impact on poverty. Recessions are costly for the poor, uh, more, much more than for, for the affluent people. So uh, for next year, our goal is to try to maintain the 5% growth, but many analysts have posted 4.5% for Colombia, which is okay. It's, it's for the time being and for the conditions that we are seeing in the world economy would be a good road to growth. Is realistic? Do you think that it will be realistic? Even it, depends, it depends strongly on what happens abroad. It, let's say it's realistic in terms of, of, the, of the domestic economy. We see domestic demand growing strongly. For example, private domestic demand is growing at 14% in real terms. So we do have the, uh, the let's say, the gasoline in terms of a uh, private demand. Uh, exports are behaving well, especially prices of exports. I go, I, I behave very well. But even quantities, we uh, remember that we lost Venezuela as a strong partner. So we have been trying to replace Venezuela with other markets. Unfortunately for us, Latin America is booming, and Latin America is demanding much more Colombian goods and services. But let's say it's realistic, taking into consideration that there is uncertainty from the world economy. Mm -hmm. um, um, Brazil is reportedly preparing for a Greek default. How Colombia is preparing themselves? We did uh, the same uh, in, uh, this week on Tuesday. President Santos gathered worker unions, the Congress, the banking industry, the manufacturing industry representatives from, from all sectors. And basically, what we said using um, uh, we're using the, the movie Gladiator. There is a, there's a scene when, when the, the main character says, whatever comes out of, that gate, of those gates, if we are together, we have a better chance of surviving, which is the fundamentals of the Colombian economy are right. The problem is expectations, right? Even with strong fundamentals, if expectations suffer, uh, you will have a, a lower growth. So I'm basically, especially uh, the channel, uh, the credit channel. So the idea is to tell banks, if you guys keep providing credit to households, to small firms especially, and of course to, to the whole economy, we could have a better equilibrium than if you guys get scared. So we'll be together, we'll be gathering and you know, uh, monitoring the crisis and monitoring whatever happens abroad and trying to dampen the effects on the Colombian economy. So is try to, to find an expectational equilibrium so that we can keep our growth before above 4%, 5%. Any specific measures? Yes, we have total expenditure in infrastructure for Colombia was $6 billion this year and will be 50% more next year, like around 9 to $10 billion for next year. So the government will spend much more, right? Uh, we expect uh, that uh, the also, if necessary, as we said, we can change the stance of fiscal policy and monetary policy. Not yet, but to be prepared, uh, waiting for the shock to, to show up and to show the magnitude and the channel. But uh, we will fulfill our, our expenditure, which, as I showed, is, is substantial. And also uh, ask banks maintain a uh, banking regulations, supervision, so, so that maintain them capitalized, solid, and so they can still provide the same amount of credit that they are trying, they're providing right now. But no specific financial regulation on banking or anything? No, not so far. Just kind of... surveillance, yeah. Um, also, we were, um, we're talking about all this, uh, the economy and the, and the downturn of the equity market. <coughs> How is also Colombia is preparing themselves for if, it's, um, if we have slump in commodities, in commodities prices? Well, that will be, a, a, that will have an effect on fiscal uh, finances, of course, because Colombia gets a, well, a substantial amount of uh, fiscal revenues from oil exports, uh, also coal exports. So 
The question is, is how much can the price of oil go down? In the in the 2007 uh, 2008 recession, it went down to 35 dollars per barrel, but for, for a very short period. So we're forecasting 80 dollars per barrel in our fiscal figures, and and if there is a it is a decline in, in the world price of oil, we hope that to be temporary. So an average for next year, remember that this is the whole 2012. So if on average for next year the price is 80, we can weather that. Uh, for every $10 decline, we will have an impact on fiscal balances, but then by that, by, by, by that time, if that's the case, uh, we have a fiscal rule that allows us to increase the fiscal deficit. So to compensate the impact of, of let's say, a recession, a world recession. So it would be even uh, admissible to increase fiscal deficit to compensate for that. So let's say in our fiscal rule, it is there are the compensatory measures ingrained that allow us to weather such a situation. But hopefully, any movements in the price of oil would be temporary, not that uh, uh, permanent. And that is also taking into account that it will also affect your neighbors and main trade partners like Brazil, Chile, and everybody else. Yeah. There are also two compensatory measures, which is, uh, in that case, the exchange rate will devalue, and that will help other exports first. And second, since the price of oil is also a price of a crucial input to the economy, uh, reducing the costs would, would make some compensatory measures. So uh, we, we uh, depend strongly, all of us, on China. So for the price of oil to suffer, uh, for the price of oil commodities, we will need China to have a bad performance next year. I was in Washington last week, and the message from the, all the analysts that follow China is uh, they will most likely grow at 9%, 8 to 10%, but let's say point forecast 9% next year, with which we could have the prices of commodities to have some, some, some support. And also, you mentioned China. Uh, because um, what do you see the benefits to, to open your economy to Asia? Is it going to be a little bit more exposure to the risk of global economy downtown? Not really. We are, we are seeing from Brazil, from Chile, from Argentina and Peru, which have led Colombia in, in, in the uh, strategy of, of uh, exporting to China. We have seen that they have the, uh, got a, a strong uh, push from the Chinese economy in the last year. So Colombia is following that lead, and we are uh, trying to export uh, more and more to Asia, not only China, but to the whole uh, uh, Asian continent. And, and that would be a compensatory measure vis-a-vis -vis depending on the US or on Europe. Also, exports within Latin America, we have told Brazil that should import more from Latin America, as they do in Asia. 60% of, of trade in Asia is, is, is intra-regional trade. In Latin America, that's not the case. So we're increasing uh, intra-regional trade in Latin America, but there's a lot of room still to increase it uh, even further. We also would like to know about, uh, with the downturn in equity markets, um, that would stop all the investors, you know, uh, we would like to know the investors, the Colombian companies, um, going ahead with the new share, of, uh, share sales, and how do you see the direct investment in, in Colombia? This is an opportunity for Colombian investors and Colombian companies because uh, if the world has a downturn, prices abroad will go down. Firms, as they, as they are doing right now, can issue either debt or equity in Colombia and get that money and go abroad and buy. And they are buying Colombian companies, are buying companies in, in uh, the US. Uh, around Latin America. So this is, remember that the Rothschilds said, or somebody they said, says that they said uh, that when there's blood in the street, you should buy, right? So uh, if, if there are problems in the world economy, is the time and opportunity for, to, to emerging markets to go abroad and buy. Mm -hmm. And in terms of currency, another thing that we are really interested, I know that we did an interview with you last weekend, but uh, we see in Latin America recent weakness in, 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 in the region. Um, is this just a short blip or will have uh, further strengthening um, once the Greek problem is solved? Um, do you see the best that will go down up and down? 
the the evolution of change rates all just depended on the circumstances like the last two weeks i actually and the brazilians too wanted the, some devaluation so i am i am glad with what has happened so far so that our peso went to 1900 so that's i'm not sad about that uh, I, I don't like more volatility but well that's not for me to decide so uh, we will have to uh, li to live with whatever comes out uh, from from the from the current situation uh, world, worldwide but uh, actually we had some uh, overvaluation that was corrected with this situation so so that, that that's it that was an upside let's say so mm -hmm. to speak and in the peso what is will be the ideal level for you the current level 1900 i like it a lot and just one question for my american colleagues the free trade agreement um uh, colombia is looking to win that you with the u.s um how confident you are that in winning this I, I in Washington I visited the State Department and they, they told me they most they have a, a, a window of opportunity in October to pass it in Congress so I hope that's true uh, the US has done huge amounts of investments during the last 50 years in Latin America not only monetary investments but in fiscal stability institutions etc going out of Latin America would be the worst mistake a economic and political mistake, which is exactly what Latin America is creating wealth and doing good businesses and growing, getting out of Latin America, well, not honoring, uh, let's say, this commitment in Colombia of free trade would be the worst mistake they could make. But uh, I, I'm pretty confident that they will, they will see the light that trade with Colombia and also with Panama and also with Korea probably with them it was a very good business and they will approve it in October. If I was one investor, what would you say? Why should you invest in Colombia? Why should I invest in Colombia? Because we, will, we have a very strong uh, outlook for the next 20 years. We will be creating the middle class out of the working class and the poor. And Colombia is right now 45, 46 million a people country will be 50 or 60 million in, in 20 or 30 years. So there's a lot of demand and a lot of growth and there's a lot of potential. It's a green country with a lot of water, uh, with the Caribbean and Pacific coasts, and especially with a, a well-educated uh, population. So it can only grow. <laughs>